Welcome to World at Work TV. I'm Allison Avalos, and I'm joined today by Tom Sendergeld and Mark Inglesian, both from Walgreens, and we're talking about private health care exchanges. So gentlemen, let's start off with the basics. What is a private health care exchange? A private health care exchange is another way for an employer to deliver health care. It mirrors the public exchange. It has some of the same components, uh, the metallic levels, bronze through platinum, a list of carriers that may or may not be offered in an area, a regional standard basis for offering the care, uh, the health care plan in different regions across the country. So it, it, it's a platform to deliver health care, to provide competition for the carriers to compete for business from the workforce, but it still remains an employer-sponsored plan uh, under the guidance of ERISA. What were some of the strategic considerations and driving factors in your decision to migrate to a private health care exchange? Well, Allison, we've been looking at uh, the Affordable Care Act back since 2011, really to examine you know, what was going to be the impact on Walgreens as a business, because we are in the health care business, uh, but also as an employer with 250,000 employees and team members in the United States. So uh, for us, it was really you know, looking at a lot of different alternatives, looking at what the, how the legislation was going to play out, how the administrative rules were written, and so forth. And through Tom's team back in 2012, we began to look at different providers in the country and partners, potential partners, that had different models, some self-insured, some fully insured that went to private exchange. Okay, so how many potential providers did you, did you consider on your way to the chosen provider, and what were some of those key factors in that decision? The comparison in looking at a private exchange is a little bit different than the, the normal market analysis you might do. So we did a preliminary look to see what the capabilities of each of the carriers were and whether or not they could handle our size and complexity, because this is not only a design change, where you're offering different plan plans, but it's also an administrative change. We were wholly insourced. We ran all of our benefits ourselves, had our own call center. And so we were looking for not only a partner that could deliver the private exchange solution, but also one that could deliver an administrative solution for, to a company of our size. And so when we looked across the span, we looked at the major ones that were out there in 2012 and considered them based on a series of small criteria whether they could handle our size, whether their, their national footprint was big enough for us in their, in their exchange, um, and settled on Aon Hewitt and the fully insured uh, space, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, why that's an advantage for us. So as you headed down this path, what were some of the concerns of senior management, and how did you all go about building that business case to get this done? Well, that's quite a relevant question, because there were a number of concerns that senior management had. Um, like many large employers, we have been self-insured uh, with a third-party administrator for quite a number of years. In fact, as long as anybody could remember, that's the way we had done it. So there were a lot of sort of scratching head questions like, why would we go fully insured? Um, because we are uh, America's largest pharmacist uh, and pharmacy drug chain, there was clearly uh, some expectations that our leaders had around preserving our pharmacy benefit, preserving the relationships that we have with payers, uh, PBMs and so forth across the country. So we're not only a player in that market, we're also a competitor with other firms uh, also in the healthcare space. Clearly the, the team member experience was another um, discussion point with our leadership that was very appropriate obviously, but it was a long discussion over many sessions um, and we had to dig in uh, to Aon Hewitt and the existing customers that they had to really try to understand how did this experience go, not only from an enrollment perspective, but also ongoing. And the history was short. They, we only had a year or two of history. Uh, but they opened up to the employers that had been in the exchange. We talked to them. We talked to their heads of HR, their heads of benefits, and uh, did quite a bit of diligence. Um, I would say in concert with our leaders who also reached out to their own colleagues and networks, uh, you know, and network professionals, you know, throughout the industry. Probably a large part of the success of the program was the engagement at the senior management level. I, I think we'll probably cover that later, um, but it, it, we were talking yesterday, it's probably the largest piece of the success of the program that the leadership was so engaged in the decision-making process. Okay, so at a high level, can you kind of explain how this program works? 
it's easiest to start it from the employee's perspective, what the team member is going to go experience when they go to buy on the exchange. There's a whole host of tools and resources for them to use that help them with their decision making. Um, they can look at, uh, they can enter claims information and as the years go on, the claims information will self-populate. They can ask, answer a series of questions that will help direct them to the way they like to buy healthcare coverage. And for example, uh, do you, does, your, does your provider matter in the network? Do you like to pay for coverage out of your paycheck or, or as you have care? And those questions help direct them to a series of choices. Then the team member goes through a series of questions about whether or not they use tobacco, um, they see how much the subsidy is going to be from us, and the subsidy is based on uh, a traditional subsidy that we had in the past, but now that's visible to the team member. Then the team member gets to see the choices that are available to them in the region that they live in. And so they can choose all the platinums from bronze, bronze plus, silver, gold, and platinum. The first three are high deductible health plans, the last two are advanced PPO plans. And then they can pick their carrier. And at the end, they result with the net uh, deduction that's going to going to come out of their paycheck, the difference between the subsidy and the full cost of the premium, which they see all of it, the full transparency, is part of the solution. So how are your wellness program initiatives integrated into the private exchange program? We still have a huge investment in the wellness of our people and uh, part of the team that's left behind to still manage this for Walgreens from the strategy side and the implementation side ha has ownership for that wellness program and part of the wellness program components are a value-based benefit design that we still leverage on top of the private exchange. Uh, we believe that now our work instead of designing and building benefit programs is really to work on the well-being of our people and to offer tools and resources to help them be, be better focused on living well. Uh, the whole program is called Live Well at, at Walgreens. And the, the goal is to keep that in front of them at all times. Our program is built to engage at the beginning through uh, health risk questionnaire biometrics that they can do in our store. Uh, and then they receive HRA dollars that help them with their deductible and co-pays. And then they also receive healthy activity points throughout the year that go on to our balance rewards card for rewards back in the store. So programs like this, would, what Tom just described, internally we call that well-informed. It's really, uh, the point is for team members and their dependents who are on our plan to really understand uh, their biometrics and their risk factors. Uh, we actually encourage them to get into programs where they're offered health coaches. Uh, if they're on a prescription medication routine, we offer them zero copay for high-risk groups who are diabetic or asthmatic, uh, hypertensive, etc. So these are programs we've had in place uh, basically during your and my tenure with the company for the last three years. And one of the things our leaders did want to make sure is that we, we kept those <laughs> programs in place, that we retained control over them, uh, that we continued to innovate um, for more things. We, we plan to do more. Uh, so this, uh, probably control in that area was much more important to us than control in the area of plan design and how much a copay is and how much deductible is and how much of out of pocket is. Those decisions are largely controlled at the exchange level. So you mentioned that the subsidy is transparent for the first time ever. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how that works and some of the mechanics that follow? Yeah, so I mentioned a few minutes ago that one of our leaders key areas of concern was how's, how was this going to affect our team members' experience. And of course, when they went to the site for the first time, they were actually going to see dollar amounts um, that had never been um, open to them before. That We hadn't been transparent about that. We'd always just kind of told people from year to year, here's your payroll contribution. So in this particular case, the subsidy has a history. We have... Uh, a history with Walgreens of subsidizing our health care coverage for our team members and their dependents, and we were committed to maintaining that ratio. So there was, we did not use this as an opportunity to cost shift even greater. So that was an important sort of guiding principle that we had, that we confirmed with our leaders. This was not necessarily about saving the company money. Um, we did believe um, that there was an opportunity to, to reduce the cost of health care for both team members and their employer, and that's what we were really trying to go for. So the subsidy itself um, 
we retained the historical cost sharing percentage uh, that had been in place for years. So the subsidy then, it, you have to base it on something. You know, the subsidy has to fit into some kind of a model. The way the, the, way the private exchange works is there are five uh, metallic levels. Uh, silver happened to be the same actuarial value as the two prior plans we had in 2013 and, and earlier, which were consumer-driven health care plans at about 70-ish percent. Um, because that was the base uh, comparator, the easiest way was to build the subsidy then on that comparator. And then we built it by region because the premiums vary across 21 different regions in the country. That variation then, in order to make the silver plan the most similar in the country, we varied that subsidy for the lowest cost carrier in the silver plan across the country, such that every employee saw the same resulting premium for the lowest cost silver plan in the country. And then the variation went from there. So if you wanted to buy down into bronze, bronze in some regions was no cost. If you wanted to buy up to platinum and have first dollar coverage, you bought up to platinum. So then it became the choice of the individual to vary from the previous plan design on where they wanted to buy. Well, that greater transparency, I imagine, prompts greater communication. So that'll be a nice segue into part two. Thank you.